Yeah, this notion of clapter I thought was really good. And it's something I've seen a lot um, having watched a lot of comedy. I also used to watch a lot of comedy at Columbia. Uh, okay. And they had, there's, you know, there's comedy clubs and comedy groups that do basically comedy by Columbia students for Columbia students. Highly progressive. I, okay. I did uh, not know that. That's sure. I yeah. think of I think of acapella groups when I think of uh, Ivy League entertainment. Yes, <laughs> I'm not sure that comedy is much better than the acapella. But you yeah. know, I, I have thought of this. What a, what a damning statement, by the way. Arguably not better than the acapella groups. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> you just cut their throats. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is the, the clapter, which is, you know, the, the sort of instead of getting people to have sort of like a deep belly involuntary laugh, like yeah. that really good kind of laugh where you, you can't help yourself. You can't help a laugh. Right. Even mm -hmm. if you think what was said was like so, somehow wrong, you just cannot help yourself but you're just di your diaphragm is moving without your say so those are the mm -hmm. really the deepest kinds of laughs yeah. that comics want to be getting there's this other thing you call clapter which is and, and you'll see this in a lot of a lot a lot, a lot of comics acts which is they'll yeah. say something praiseworthy something mm -hmm. they'll say something uh that's not strictly speaking funny but that yeah. enough people in the <laughs> audience agree with yeah, that you'll get lots of claps and woos, but yeah. very few laughs. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, and some sometimes it's almost uh, it's like you're bullying the audience into responding to it. If you mm -hmm. say something like like you know, teachers should be paid more, it's like oh fucking fine, I, yeah. okay. It's like I don't, it's like, I, don't I don't want to look be like an asshole not clapping at that. Exactly. What, what do I think? <laughs> teachers should be paid less. Yeah, right, right. Do I That's hate not babies. What, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so yes, people do respond, but uh, that is absolutely not necessarily the same as having a good time and uh and yeah it's a it's a it's a cheap way to do things and i didn't invent the term clapter by the way clapter is a that's a comedy term that's out there oh, I, I, I didn't realize that. I never, no no, no I, I didn't invent it. well it's it's yeah stand up say it because we needed you know ask john mcwhorter like how do words develop words develop when you have a need for them there became a need <laughs> to describe mm -hmm. this thing where people yeah like in stand-up specifically but it can apply to any type of comedy yeah you have to get a response when you're doing stand up, right? Mm -hmm. You have to get a response. To, I, you've, I'm glad you've done a few open mics. That silence, it burns, it oh, burns, yeah. and you can you can feel it right. eating at your skin. So you have to get some response, right? But laughter is hard to come by. So if you can't do laughter, then yes, just say something that everyone agrees with, right? And then at least you don't have silence. Clapter, getting clapter doesn't feel at all like bombing, and I think it's it's hard to relate. I mean, people can imagine the humiliation, but the humiliation of just <laughs> thinking a joke is hilarious and going up there and saying it and the punchline just is crickets. Yeah. It's mortifying. So, so can, can I can I ask these five open mics? How did they go? You know, actually, I didn't bomb ever. Congrats. I, I, I didn't kill either. OK, but I I, I, I did solidly. But no, OK, not total silence. I, I think it, yeah, in no. early shows, not total silence counts as not bombing any reaction whatsoever yeah yeah other than clapping is uh, yeah yeah is bombing now you didn't make the giant mistake that a lot of people do and invite 30 friends to your first show did you no 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 okay okay <laughs> that's because you're a smart guy i see that sometimes at open mics people mm -hmm. oh it's it's way too much investment thankfully when i was bombing in my early days i was bombing uh in front of nobody i knew so uh, right. at least i didn't have to like explain myself afterwards right yeah but the, i think that the, the temptation to go for clapter is just it, it uh especially if your audience is ideologically homogenous yeah like say you're a, a comic doing a show on a college campus not a professional co comic or or maybe a professional comic it's like you kind of know the students will clap if you say anything progressive Mm -hmm. And if you're an up and coming comic, the temptation to mistake that for comedy mm -hmm. or to mistake that for being really well liked mm -hmm. is um, it, it's it, it, I imagine it can be very tough for people who who maybe don't think about this the same way to distinguish that from actually making people laugh. It's like, oh, well, they were applauding me the whole time. Maybe yeah. I'm really good at this comedy thing. And, and the problem with that is 
the second you go to an ideologically mixed audience, uh-huh. like at the comedy yeah. cellar, or whatever, you have tourists, you have New Yorkers, you have, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of people, or God forbid you go somewhere, you, you do what every stand up comic has to do and tour the country and mm-hmm. play for rural audiences and, and so yep. forth. All the stuff that got one audience to clap for is you're, you're going to lose another audience on. And yeah. that's where it becomes difficult because had you been really trying to be funny from the start, funny mm-hmm. is usually funny to, to a broader range of, of, of audiences, mm-hmm. but the clapter is really politically specific. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, you know, I never had too many political jokes in my standup act and people are often surprised by that because, you know, it's, it's one of my main areas of interest It's what I studied in school. It's where I've worked for basically my entire adult life. I, I had very few political jokes. And the, the main reason for that is because because I was, you know, going uh, touring some not I was never like a road dog, but I'd get out of, you know, the Northeast Corridor. And but even within the Northeast Corridor, the minute you start talking about politics, half the audience goes, you know what, this is not a thing I'm interested in. It's, it's just not something I follow. I don't really know what you're talking about. So you've already lost half the audience. The remaining half, if your joke has you know, any edge to it whatsoever. If it was anything beyond, you know, back in the day, you could do like, oh, George W. Bush isn't very smart. And people, you know, even Republicans would concede, all right, he's not that smart. But but any any edge beyond that, any commentary beyond that, anything where your um, actual viewpoint is known, then you're going to lose half of the half. So now you're down to talking to one quarter of the audience. So it generally doesn't work. But, and this is an important but, Yeah. Then sometimes you'll get into rooms, you'll get into these really progressive rooms in Brooklyn. You know, it's it's just some Brooklyn bar and everybody's 25 and they have an ironic mustache. And yeah, you can you can just say something that is something they agree with and get that clap their response. And then, you know, I worried about this on last week tonight. And it's a trap. I admit I fell into sometimes I would kind of I get kind of self-righteous and think, you know, what I'm saying is important. What I'm doing is important here. And I would it's like I wanted to do comedy, you know, that wasn't just, hey, what's the deal with soup? Have you seen how many flavors they have? It's like I wanted to do something that was a little sharper than that. Mm -hmm. But if you do it wrong, then it does just become, hey, here are six talking points I read earlier today on the Daily Coast. And I want you to clap every each time, all six times when I say them, I want you to clap. And I'm going to count that as a segment. That is that is the form done wrong, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so I, I don't want to give anyone the impression that I'm I only object to progressive preachiness. Sure. I think w- what is true of me is that when I see a, a stand up or anything comedy related, I, I generally prefer it to be pure comedy. So, mm-hmm. for instance, when I saw Dave Chappelle's latest special, where the majority of the special is about one topic, trans. Yeah. And within that, um, the ratio of pure jokes to actual points that Dave Chappelle thinks are serious and deep observations mm-hmm. was like, I don't know, it felt like one to one. Yeah. Or maybe two to one, or even, even three to one. And that was a real turnoff for me even when I agreed with him on certain specific points, Mm -hmm. I just felt like this is not what I'm coming to a comedy special for is your, your commentary. And I think the truth is most comics aren't that good Mm -hmm. at commentary at serious commentary, even Chappelle or, or at minimum, they're not nearly as good as they are at jokes. Right. So the, the quality of the show goes from here when they're making jokes to here Mm -hmm. when they're making commentary and it's noticeable. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, that's why the people who can actually do it are, you know, legendary, Mm -hmm. you know, Mort Sauls and George Carlin's is like, right. That's why we remember them because they could actually do that. But yeah, I'm and and for what it's worth, like, it's hard for me to be objective about Dave Chappelle because he was huge to me back in the day. One of the funniest Mm -hmm. shows I've ever seen. I saw Dave Chappelle when I was in college and it was I mean, he was an absolute murderer back then in, in, you know, comedy terms, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> didn't literally come, but he, it was so funny. Killing them softly is to this day, one of my favorite specials. So yeah, that, funny. That was a special that got me into stand-up comedy oh, at all. Yeah. That's yeah. 
that's one of the huge ones. It's one of the huge ones. And uh, yeah, so he's, he's one of the on, the, on the very short list, you know, of like people who made me think I want to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, the, the last special, you know, there are many, many, many opinions about it. But one thing I think most people agree on is like, not as funniest, not as funniest. <laughs> and that's certainly mm -hmm. where I fall. Like, eh, not as funniest. I, I certainly didn't enjoy watching it. Yeah, I mean, half as much as killing me softly. That one was way funnier. Right. But but I think it was it was not funny for the same general reason that Nanette was not funny, which is that <laughs> too much of it were not too much of it was not composed of jokes. It was composed yeah. of 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 points that the comic thought were very serious and interesting to them. But mm -hmm. again, I you know, most of the audience in both cases, most of your audience are going to find your points to be shallow if you're mm -hmm. a, a, a comedian who spent you know 30 40 years figuring out how to be super funny but not you haven't really spent 40 years figuring out how to make good arguments that the, that are controversial enough to yeah. be meaningful but uh not so controversial that you lose the majority of people you're talking to like, like that that's a, yeah. a hard skill too so you know, I, I don't know. And, and I'm not really sure if I can defend this sort of purist approach to comedy that you should only make jokes. And I'm not even sure that's what I believe. You know, I think yeah. if you're going to make a serious point, it, you should be really sure that it's profound enough to justify the departure from comedy. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think people probably don't do that as, as much as they should. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. If you can, hey, if you if you can do something that is, you know, an interesting comment, an interesting statement. And it's maybe a little funny, but not very funny. Like, that's a thing, too. Some people are going to be very into that. I mean, definitely. I mean, when I was at last week tonight and now that I'm writing my sub stack, there are definitely pieces like they're not the funniest things I've ever written. Mm -hmm. But like, I still think they're good because I, th I still think there's something there. Like I said, you're kind of cooking with two ingredients. You got the commentary and you got the comedy. Mm -hmm. If you're using, yeah, if it's, if the commentary is less interesting, well, then it better be funny. And if the commentary is pretty interesting, then you can dial the comedy down a little right. bit. And yeah, I agree that the real problem comes when you're kind of doing neither, right? right. Maybe the commentary is shit. And then, it, and then those are coming in place of the jokes. Mm -hmm. Then it does become a case of, yeah, why am I watching this?